Welcome to The Jenny Carlson Show. The Oklahoma City Spark has gone independent. A few weeks ago, the pro softball team announced that after being in existence for a year, it was leaving women's pro fast pitch, the league known as WPF. Tina Floyd, the Sparks owner, joins us to talk about the decision to go independent as well as the future of pro softball in OKC and beyond. But first, I want to say a word of thanks to these sponsors for supporting The Jenny Carlson Show. The Oklahoma Ford Dealers Association, Two Fellows Movers, MidFirst Bank, the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, FireLakeJobs.com, NextGen Roofing, 988 Oklahoma's Mental Health Lifeline. Remember, drive into your best in Oklahoma Ford dealers today for the best deals on Ford's full lineup of trucks and SUVs. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And hey, if you're thinking about moving, let's face it, a box of pizza and a case of beer just don't work like they used to. Nobody wants to help you move. But we know two fellas that love moving. At Two Fellas Moving Company, we offer free, no strings quotes for your move. With over 20 years experience, we've pretty much moved it all. Our services don't end up moving either. Need to do some remodeling or spring cleaning? We have you covered with dumpster rentals and junk haul services. Remember, quotes are free and there are no strings attached. If you're moving in Oklahoma, make sure to call the fellas. Visit twofellas.com for your free quote today. Well, Tina, thanks so much for joining the Jenny Carlson show, show to talk about the spark in this move to independence. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is obviously a, a, a big decision um, after a year in the WPF. Walk us through this this uh, this this process because you guys announced this a few days before Christmas, but I have no doubt that this wasn't just a few days before Christmas when you woke up and decided, all right, independence for the spark. Right. Of course, it was it was a long process and a long decision, not an easy decision to make. So I involved our athletes from the very beginning on making this choice and this decision. Uh, their input is critical because they've been playing for years without a voice to some degree. So to have their input is, is what it's about. So we, we had a great summer. For our first year, I couldn't have asked for anything better. Our attendance in Oklahoma City was amazing. Our, our fans were amazing. But you know, once the decision for the Olympics to bring back softball in a few years it was announced, it really opens up a lot more opportunities for pro softball. You know, we have national teams everywhere that are preparing with the best athletes in the world, and it gives us an opportunity to bring those athletes in too and showcase that Hall of Fame. So for us, it was an opportunity to help grow the sport. And mm-hmm. does do I think that the spark will be in this position forever? Absolutely not. We have plans. I'm. I'm not. Um, I'm not. I can't divulge everything, but there are plans in the works. But I don't want to rush anything because when you rush and you put something out there that's not the best, that's not the best look for our organization. So we're going to take our time and do something right. As you thought about this, and it started to come to the point where you were thinking, "All right, we're going to pull the trigger. We're going to go independent." Was there were there things along the way that helped you get to that point? Sort of make that decision final for for the spark. There were, yes. We, we had, like I said, we had a great summer. We had a, a good home series with, you know, with three different teams. But knowing that you're still playing the same three teams, it, it's, you, you've seen them all. You know, by the end of July, 1st of August, it's the same thing over and over and over, uh, which is good and bad. But on some of our road trips, you know, there were things that were just not the way I probably would have done it in, in Oklahoma City and with our ladies and Again, I'm going to go back to what I said. It's about these athletes deserving a lot more than they've been receiving in the last 20 years, even before that. So it's time to start doing things the right way for these women. And um, I hope I'm the person to do that. So, yeah, I saw some things that were, I think we can do better. So I've said that from the beginning and I'm going to stick by it. (laughs) <laughs> I know I know when you made the announcement back in December uh, to do this there I think the the quote was something along the lines of a way to move this team forward and the sport forward um drill into that a little bit let's start with the team how do you feel like the move to independence not being in the WPF can help move the spark in particular forward playing independently it allows us to travel to different places you know when you are in a league 
you are bound to who you can play or in or outside of the league. So we can get around that part now and, and play who we want to and be in front of more young girls who want, who want to see people, women that look just like them. So we can travel to where there are some, some young ladies and, and get in front of these kids. Because when you look at who is on the Spark roster already, and, and we're going to add to it, but you have, you know, Haley Lee, Jocelyn Hollow. You have some of the biggest names in softball in a long time. And so we want to be able to get in front of more people, even on the road, because we're doing good things and we want to get those crowds and young girls out there. Yeah. What I'm about hoping- the sports? Go ahead, Tina. No, I'm hoping that is a huge way to move this sport forward. Yeah. I, I've, I've seen some comments out there after we made the announcement, you know, well, how is this going to move the sport forward? I, I would say to that, just trust and watch because there's a lot behind the scenes of softball for the last many, many years that has to be kind of um, rearranged and controlled and presented better for this to move forward. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think you had made this comment at one point um, that the, uh, the WNBA, which obviously has now been around for a couple decades, but they had to restart and reform and redo uh, several times to yes. get to this point. Is that a lot of what you're thinking just in terms of, yes, this feels like a, a big and possibly for some people scary move, but yet it's, it's sort of how things have gone in the past for professional women's sports in this country. hundred percent. And that's, I, I heard a stat, I think I was at NFCA a convention a couple of weeks ago, but this, this, this statistic was the WNBA failed 14 times before the version we have now. Yeah. And I'm sure that I didn't know that. So I'm sure the common fan, you don't know what goes on behind the scenes and what's working and what's not. And so to, uh, to see what they've done with that, what an, what a feat to accomplish. And I know softball can do the same thing. And softball has had many rebranding opportunities. So when, when we make the change to go play independently, again, I don't foresee us staying there forever, but to get the right formula and the right, you know, mash of the right people at the right table, it can't be just thrown together overnight. So there's a lot of talkings happening and a lot of proverbial table in making sure the ladies are represented at that table is what we have to do. Yeah. You obviously had, uh, you know, you referenced the fact that, that last summer you had a good year in the WPF, played in the, the final series for the championship. But I know that you went to all the games and uh, were there every step of the way. I assume that that really did shape what you thought would be the best move for the spark, sort of your understanding of, you know, professional softball, because while you bought a team, I mean, you'd never been in that situation. So how did, how did, how did that, how did that, uh, that just that experience of going around and seeing the games and the the understanding sort of that came from that for you? Right. I, I would not go back and change one thing that I did this past summer. I think it really let my husband and myself see what's working and what's not within the sport, within, you know, our team, within our little travel. So it, it was different layer layers of what was working and was what was not. So I would not trade that time for anything. But it also shows um, some of the battles and the heels that professional women in sports have to face daily. Um, and I, I watched a documentary last night. I've seen it before. It's called Burn the Ships. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Um, no. It's about the old NPF, the, a former pro league. I would suggest you watch it. But okay. watching that, I see the same things happening 10 years later. Mm. It's the exact same pay for these women, the exact same, which is not much. Uh, so those type of things are what just fuel my fire of what can we do to have more exposure to be on a bigger platform, TV, whatever that might be, to get attention to this sport and to these women. Yeah. So, yes, w- traveling, traveling made me tired. I don't know if I slept one whole night. Um, <laughs> I had to room with Coach Flores a couple times, but you do what you have to do and just make it. But it, it was a good yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah. At this point for professional softball in this country, WPF, Athletes Unlimited are limited are those are to my knowledge the really the big premier leagues right now for pro softball in this country. Is there a thought in your mind that potentially joining AU is possible for the Spark or is this a moment where you say let's reinvent, let's do something totally different moving forward? 
I think there's all kinds of options. And, and from what I can see right now, these ladies, if they have the opportunity where they could play in a league or for an independent team and play AU, that would put more money in the athletes' pockets, which is what is needed. Yeah. Uh, you tell me a, um, another athlete and maybe a man, man sport, male sport that makes $10,000 for three months of play. That yeah. It doesn't happen. And, and I'm not mad about that, but let's try to find a way to let them earn more money. And if there is a way that soft, the softball world can all come together and work together and let them play longer and maybe in two different leagues, let's figure it out. Yeah. So my door is open and I've had some really good conversations with, with my friends to figure out how to let this happen for these ladies. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that this isn't a forever for the spark. Are you looking, are, have you set sort of a, this is a year, this is two years, or at this point, are you just willing to wait and sort of see what this next calendar year brings for the spark? Well, we're, we're, we're ready for 2024. Our schedule is almost finished. So um, we're going to release that hopefully around February 1st. So fans are be looking for that. Um, do I think that sustainability as an independent team forever? I don't see that. I don't see that moving the sport forward um, for long term. It's, yeah. it's a step we had to take this year and we're okay with that. But absolutely, there's, there's plans, there's thoughts, and there's a big picture out there. 2025, 2026. So yes, the spark will be making some announcements and um, I'll be calling you up. Don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> we, it won't go unnoticed, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, there's going to be some really, I think we'll see some, some bigger names coming into as far as maybe some support from male athletes. You, okay. you, and you see that, you see that in um, uh, Angel City FC, you see that yeah. in different places. And so when we can have some male athletes at a high level get behind this when and I think it's coming, uh, that's going to give us some more um, credibility and, and opportunities to go out there. You know, obviously you guys had a good season last, uh, last summer. The crowds at Hall of Fame Stadium were, you know, really solid. I know, as you said, the hope is that this moves things forward, improves the situation. Is there any concern that just talking about independence may stall momentum or anything like that in Oklahoma City? I think there was a slight concern. Obviously, I mean, I have to protect the Spark brand. You know, it, yeah. making the right decision for the athletes, for the Spark brand, and for softball is three different tiers. So we had to take into account all of those. So I know there were some fans when we announced, you know, through social, just, you know, don't know if this is the best decision. My my two cents to that, or my, I won't say come back, but my answer to that is, please be patient because mm -hmm. it is going to be the best move. I know this summer, if, if we bring in some international and national teams, who doesn't want to see uh, the best in any nation? I'm not going to say which ones because it's going to be big, but come out and play. So you're going to get an opportunity to see even different players. Yeah. But I would also be ready, Jenny, for an announcement. I think there is a new team formed and will be in okay. the, the northeast part of the the world, uh, okay. the nation. Uh, but they'll be playing this summer with us as well. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah. So it, there, it's not, there's still growth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I'm, I'm curious, you, you've kind of alluded to this. It sounds like when this announcement went out, Sounds like you're hearing from people, you know, and within the softball world, just the um, I mean, it sounds like there's definitely people wanting to discuss and, and explore. A have you been at all surprised by the reaction that you've gotten that people are, are, are wanting to call and wanting to chat? Or what's sort of been your sense of just the way that the softball world has uh, has taken to this news? I think it's about let's say 70, 30. I was going to say 50, 50, 70, 30. I would say most of the 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 individuals who have followed this deeply and have seen the roadblocks and what's preventing it from growing is behind this. Let's okay. not make the same mistakes that we've made in the past. So that's so encouraging. And when you hear those from people that have been in this sport for 20, 30 years and you get those phone calls, you're, you know that you're doing something right. I think the 30% just saw that, that that was a very good product out there and what we did, and they don't want us to lose that momentum. But I can reassure you that um, 
that we have not lost, we will not lose that momentum. We'll be yeah. making another announcement within hopefully two weeks of the platform, which we will be seen on this next summer. And it will be very convenient and user-friendly and available to everyone. Wow. So um, we're making those moves to make sure we're seen and the spark is not losing our traction and momentum. Yeah. You've talked about schedule and I know that it, nothing can be, you know, sort of out just yet, but um, it, are you expecting about the same number of games? Are you largely going to have a home and away or how, how's the schedule Absolutely. going to be uh, constructed this next summer? It's actually coming together nicely. We, we will have a home and away series with some different teams. We'll be bringing in, um, I, I almost said their name. We'll be bringing in the, a Northeast team. <laughs> we'll be traveling to the Northeast team. Uh, uh, we also have some, some, a team from the Southeast. I can't, I'm trying to get my direction straight. Um, <laughs> it's too early. Uh, we have, a, so we will have some true home series, away series. And I'm very mm -hmm. excited about that piece as well. So it's not yeah. going to look much different to the, the, the fan that comes. We're going to get to see this, a, a new a Spark 2.0. I'm not going to say better because I love the original, the OGs. They're my girls. But you're going to get to see a, 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 a different version of the Spark that's we're going to, we don't want to lose. So um, I've already made that clear to my national friends that are coming in. Like, we're here to practice with you for the Olympics, but I'm, I, I don't want to lose either. <laughs> so we're not going to take it easy on anybody. No, Sorry. no automatic dub for anybody coming in, huh? No. <laughs> and I, and, and Hall of Fame Stadium, all games, home games, planning to be at Hall of Fame Stadium this year? That is the plan. Yes, ma'am. We are finishing up that contract and it will be tied with a bow on it. But to answer your previous question as well, we anticipate having the same amount of home games okay. between 15 and 18 home games. And then we'll have a road schedule as well. Uh, yeah. We won't be on the road quite as much as we were, were last year because we did go to Great Britain. Um, <laughs> we're going to take that one off the table this year. I think, <laughs> I think you might see them coming to us. So, oh. um, so, so the, I'll dangle that little nugget. But so, um, yeah, we'll have the exact, we'll have the same home. So when those season tickets come out, know yeah. that you're going to get the same amount of home games. Yeah. What about your roster? We've seen a few players being announced as re-signing. Sydney Sherrill uh, tops that list. The uh, infielder who obviously has local connections, played at Florida State. But is your roster, you feel like you're going to have a large number of the, the 2023 team returning in 2024? We have over about 70% returning. Okay. Uh, we have a few, and, and you'll see those names come out that um, are ready to, to move on and, and do their, their real job. And that's part of why I hate to say that, but that's yeah. the truth. Yeah. Um, these ladies have different jobs. Over 99% of them, softball is not their everyday job, uh, as opposed to their male counterpart. And that's, that's just something that we're working towards. Right. But yeah, I think we have about 70% coming back. You'll probably get to see us add a couple more at the end of the college season, which we're very excited about. But um, I'm fielding calls a lot of athletes that have been in different locations of, do, do you have any opening on your roster? Mm. They're, they're wanting to come play in Oklahoma City. And I, I think that's a good... Um, a good sign that I'm doing something right. Yeah. This organization is doing something right. So yeah. uh, they know the direction we're headed and we're getting calls, but that's great. So yeah, you'll get to see Sydney Cheryl back. Um, Jocelyn Allo, Haley Lee, Alex Sirocco. Um, still working on a couple. I got to, got to get Kaylani signed up. I, everybody wants to, we got to have Kaylani, but our fans will get to see some of their favorite athletes back in the spark uniform. Yeah, and I know you can't necessarily talk about this too much, but I know there's some pretty top level players coming out of the college ranks this year too, who are exhausting eligibility. So I got to think your pool is pretty deep to draw from there as well. It's pretty good. Yeah, we're very excited, and we don't have to go far out of the out of our yeah. little area to find those players. But we all we we always are looking. Um, you know, I'm going to go out to California next month to go to a couple of tournaments and, and do some scouting out there. So uh, we know here we there's just so many athletes out there uh, that want the opportunity to play at a professional level as well. So sure. we're very fortunate. Um, I know um, there's a couple of really good ones in this state that um, I'll be I'll be talking to at some point when I can. <laughs> 
<laughs> on the player side of things, I'm curious, you, you obviously, when you're in the WPF, you're operating under rules of, you know, signing players, trading players, the draft. How does that change as an independent? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that you can't, you know, go grabbing players, you know, I, but I don't know. How does that work? Contracts? I'm sure if they're under contract, you can't, you can't go grab them, but are the rules different when you're an independent versus in a league with the player acquisition and such? Yeah, and that is the piece that we're working through right now is, is that does look a lot different. You know, um, that's something that we're trying to figure out. Do we have a draft as some independent teams and do it that way? So, yeah, that piece is, is looking differently. Uh, we've we've got some we've got some rules we're going to play by. It's not going to be uh, willy nilly, but we're yeah. putting those pieces together as we speak. So that's been a little different piece. So focusing on the spark, but then also focusing on what rules are we playing by who, you know, uh, all of these things. And then something that is very near and dear that I want to see happen from the moment we start playing on and wherever we end up in the next several years, these ladies deserve a player's association and to be heard. And that is at the forefront of it. Even if it's just for the spark, we're going to have a player's players representatives. And I want to grow that for the game. My, exponentially. I mean, it's got to happen. You see that mm -hmm. in every other sport. Um, they have to have their a voice to be heard. So that's a piece mm -hmm. I'm working on setting up, even if it's just for us this year and then mm -hmm. expanding that. Sounds like you've kind of taken another job title, Tina, you know, like a future uh, pro softball uh, visionary or something. I don't know. Uh, is it, I, has it been something? <laughs> Has it been kind of crazy to step into an additional role? Because I, like you said, I'm sure you're fielding calls from people who, you know, want to talk about what's next. How do we do this? How do we move the sport forward? It is different, but yet it's so, I don't, what's the word I want to use? It's, it's so empowering to know that I'm helping these athletes move yeah. forward and find their voice too, and, and not be afraid to use their voice because, um, I'll say something controversial, and, and if I take a hit on it, I'll take the hit. Um, sometimes female athletes get pushed to the side, and their voice isn't always heard. And, and sometimes it can be by other women because we do that. And then sometimes it's just it, it's it's the men in the position too. So yeah. hoping to empower them to let their voices be heard in a very constructive, professional way has got to has got to happen. I think yeah. for too many years. They've been told to play, cash your check, and go home. And that's mm -hmm. not how it should be. So mm -hmm. there's my controversial statement. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I think it's great. I think it's great. Hey, before we let you get out of here, tell your fans where they can keep up with all the goings on. Make sure that they know all the, uh, all the different avenues to uh, keep up with news on the Spark. Absolutely. We are on every social platform, even LinkedIn. So um, you can find us and then our, our website, www.okcspark.com and, and all socials. But our marketing team is posting all the time. Yeah. We're, we're amp ramping up. But again, look for that February 1st time frame. Uh, look on all the socials. Our, we'll be sending out some email blasts. But that's when you probably see me on the news, too. But that's when we'll get to announce some big time um, opponents and some more things. So we're very right. excited about that. Awesome. Schedule release early February. Can't wait for that. Can't wait to have the softball season get here. I know it's cold and people are bundling <laughs> up, but I'm ready for some softball. Me Tina. too. <laughs> well, you all right. Well, hey, catch a game, Jenny, all summer. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> I know by the time you guys get to play, nobody's going to be thinking about how cold it is. So I'm not worried about that at all. Exactly. <laughs> well, we appreciate you coming on and we may have to have you back to talk about all the spark goodness. Yes. So don't, don't become a stranger to I us. So, I appreciate uh, your time. Yeah. Thanks Tina. And thanks Thank to everybody you. who was wa watching today. If this is your first time hearing or watching us here, be sure to subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And also you can download our new sellout crowd app for your iPhone or Android. Thanks again for being here and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.